and gentlemen. perfect here on a Thursday night. Thank you for just being so, I'm assuming, rich. I'm assuming a lot of rich people in the front row. Thank you for bringing all your money up here. Fuck yeah, man. I'm trying to make some rich friends for 2022. So that's my goal. So I'm gonna be a black friend. So don't break eye contact. What's up, nigga? What's up? We friends now. Fuck yeah. I like that. Nobody's denied that shit. Hell yeah. Nobody. They're like, well, I am rich. Goddamn, this show seems pretty accurate to me. Fuck yeah. Hell yeah. That's some real shit that day. I respect all of y'all and your money. Hell yeah. Any poor people make it out? What's up? Hell yeah. Thank you. Thank you for coming out. Thank you. But next time somebody asks you if you're poor, don't say nothing. That's why you're poor in the first place. You keep saying that shit out loud. Stop that shit, man. Be cool and quiet like the riches over here. Cool and quiet. Fuck yeah. I like that, man. Rich people never tell you how much money they got. They never tell you they, they rich. You ask them a direct question, they give you an indirect answer, you know? You got money? Oh, we're all equal. You know, that's not, that's not what I asked. <laughs> ask if you had money, you know? That's why sometimes I gotta ask in a different way, you know, ask smoothly, subtly, be cool. Be like, hey man, you play golf? What's up, you a golf player? How you doing? You, uh, all <laughs> right. Golfers, man, they're always coy too. They're all, I play, but I'm not that good, you know? I'm a member, but I never go. You know, that kind of like, <laughs> So cute. You never, like, you, know, you never meet like a loud golfer, right? Like a, a cocky golfer, right? Come off the green like, man, I golfed the fuck out of that round. Like I never met. You see me on the green, nigga, what? I got a hole in one, I put my dick in that bitch. You're like, that is a lot of golf. I tried to like golf, man, I tried. I'm, you play golf, I'm assuming, right? Like, I, <laughs> that's cool, man, don't be, don't be shy. I tried to like golf. I was a golf caddy for six years at Montclair Golf Club in New Jersey. I don't know if you heard of Montclair Golf Club. Yeah, yeah, man, it's a wonderful plantation. And that was, that was the problem, crowd. I couldn't stop thinking about slavery. I couldn't, crowd. I tried not to, I couldn't. Every morning, though, they just, you know, line us up on that hot field and pick the strongest one and we just get on that field and start singing Swing Low. I'm like, this is just too much, guys. <laughs> I'm joking, guys. They wouldn't let us talk. Nah, they wouldn't. <laughs> Let's not be talking, boy. I like this energy in the room. It's nice. It's pleasant. Classy. Y'all been day drinking? What's up? <laughs> Fuck yeah, I respect that. Hell yeah, all right? Some of y'all didn't clash, but thank you for bringing your Christian energy, all right? Thank you. <laughs> we want balance in this room. I like that. I respect, I respect drinkers. I used to be an alcoholic myself, but I made a lateral move to weed, so I didn't want to... Oh, dope, y'all made that same move too? It is a nice transition, man. Are you still as dehydrated, but fuck it, we all need water anyway. If you think about it, we all need water, bro. I'm telling you. <laughs> Some people are against this whole weed movement. They are, man. Like my ex-girlfriend, she was like, uh, sober. She was so sober, crowd. She was so, a snobby, sober woman coming in the house. Like, are you high? I'm like, are you the cops? Why are you in here too? You know, I, I pay rent here too, leave me alone, right? <laughs> But she was all concerned, like, see, I'm just worried about you. I, th I think you might be hurting your career. And I was like, maybe, but I also forgot to kill myself. So crowd, let me tell you, I'm winning, you hear me? I'm winning, baby. Hell yeah. Wait, wait, wait a minute. Some of y'all thought about killing yourselves too? What's up, man, y'all? Oh, that is so cool, man. Y'all delayed y'all suicide to come watch me perform, that is. Generous, I hear that. I feel that generosity right here in my heart. I thought about killing myself once, but I decided not to. I decided I want to die the same way I was born, by mistake. Because crowd, let me tell you, I'm winning. Every moment of every day, baby, I'm winning. 
telling, man. I just smoke weed. I think smoking weed is a very fun Christian activity. Um, um, you know what I'm saying? The, the family that smokes weed together is probably the family that's paranoid somebody's stealing their weed. But like... <laughs> Weed smoking, fun. Edibles, the devil. We can all agree on that, right? <laughs> we agree on that, right? Nobody knows what to do with these things. They give you very clear instructions, very clear. They say, put a little bit in, put a little bit in. And everybody goes, Psh, ain't no bitch. And they put as much as they can in. Just, they couldn't take that shit, but I could take it all, right? And then they eat it and go, I can't take this. I can't take it at all. And then they just give it to their friends without telling them, like, hey, have a good wedding. And they don't care, crap. My friend, my friend tried to set me up. My friend, I'm sorry, not friend, drug dealer. He tried to set me up, crap. I, I want him to be my friend. He's a nice guy, because he wears a suit, even though he only sells weed, you know, because he dresses for the job he wants, the job he has, you know. <laughs> yeah, he wants to be a coke dealer. So he, uh, yeah, man. So I asked him, I was like, dude, how strong are these brownies? Like, how strong? Like, I asked him a very simple answer. He wanted some of these brownies. I said, how strong are them, right? I'm expecting him to make a simple answer, like milliliters or ounces. Instead, he pulls out his cell phone and shows me text messages of people begging for help. So I was like, that's just... I'm scared, nigga, where am I? I'm in the park, there's a wolf chasing me. I'm like... Well, give me two, I ain't doing shit, I ain't. I'm just trying to keep the light balanced. That's what you gotta do, crowd. Keep the light balanced, well, work out, meditate, therapy. Anybody fuck with therapy at all? That's dope, man. Always, mostly, women. You know what I'm saying? Men are always like, I don't do that shit. Fuck that shit, man. I fix my brain like I fix my car, you know? You're like, but your car's a piece of shit. You know, I just... I see you Ubering constantly, nigga. What's up, man? Just... Dudes don't be looking at, they be looking at like therapy like it's some evil, I don't want nobody in my brain. Man, don't think about it like some weird, you know, crying session. Don't think about it as a recon session. Think about it as an opportunity to learn how to manipulate other people. Because my ex did that, like, <laughs> dude, you ever want to fight with a woman? Ever? Listen, seriously? No! You have like an appeasement, you'll make a good point, but nigga, you ain't got long, what, like, what? You ever notice how women are raised? They're raised different. You ever notice that when you were a kid, you were fighting, you were playing war, you know, a tag or some shit, and you were looking at little girls at a little tea party like, oh, that ain't shit. No, that was some real shit over there. That tea party? That tea party? That was like a United Nations Assembly type shit. That was espionage at its finest. Women just backstabbing, da, 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 right? Crazy. Even when girls are by themselves, where they have their dolls going, all right, this bitch don't like that bitch. Uh, that bitch don't like that bitch. That's what's gonna happen right now. So you don't... By the time you get into a family, you don't have a chance. Ladies are so good. And I've been destroyed by like both sides, like black and white. Like black women. Black women, when they get mad, it's like a blunt force. Blunt force, like right here. Fuck you, nigga. Like right there, right? Maybe like a boxer with a combination. She'd have lost your damn mind. You know, that kind of shit, right? But white women, white women is more subtle. It's more like a samurai sword. <laughs> Meaning, I didn't know I got cut until I was walking away. You know, that kind of like... Might be walking away and she just say something slick like, maybe your father doesn't love you. And you're like... <laughs> Hell yeah, Friday, all relaxed, all chilling, feeling good. Let's just talk about something to bring us all together. Sir, who'd you vote for? <laughs> Don't worry, man, I ain't gonna judge you if you chose wrong. I just wanna have a dialogue, you know what I mean? Now is the time to know, right? Okay, fine. You ain't gotta tell me who you voted for. I already know. <laughs> it's all right, because you already know. You already know who votes. You can tell the voter just by their body language, you know? Biden supporters, they all have the same kind of, you know, tense body language, you know, full of regret. You know, just very, just, <laughs> what's done is done. Let's never bring it up again. That kind of, <laughs> right? Versus, you know, Obama supporters are completely opposite. Remember Obama voters? God, they still talk about it, man. It's still nostalgic, isn't it? I still remember the day I voted for my president. Mm. I do. Yes, sir. I remember waking up singing, yes, I can. <laughs> right? Trump supporters, they also got a lot of passion, you know. You know, it's not pleasant. But it's passion, you know what I mean? It's a lot of passion, right? Fuck you, I'll do it again. Ba, da, 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 da. All right, listen. 
Listen, man, it's cool. <laughs> I ain't gonna wear my mask. Ba, 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 ba. All right, listen, man. I'm just trying to go to this Walmart in peace, really. That's my entire goal. And also, I don't want to offend any gun rights supporters in the room, because I know concealed carry is legal now. So, uh, let, me, let me tell you my position on gun control, Christ. Let me just, it's a very clear position. If you have a gun, you're right, because I don't want no trouble, all right? Because you niggas are scary. <laughs> you act like crackheads. They're gonna take all the guns. Okay, nigga, it's just, who let you into Walmart? So, like... <laughs> tell me, man, Biden, though, crowd Biden? Let me tell you, I, I, crowd, let me tell you I, try, I tried to vote for Biden. I tried. Multiple times. But... <laughs> he just kept talking, you know, and... I just kept listening. You ever listen to him talk? It's weird. When he was, you know, second dude in charge, adorable, all right? Second dude in charge, he was, a, he just come in the room just saying all crazy, hey guys, I just took a train here from Pennsylvania. I'm just happy to be here, guys. <laughs> I mean, that's a black guy. Wow, I'm happy to be here. <sighs> that guy was interesting, man. We like, yo, well, Obama, get your man. You know, it was fun, but. Then the debate happened. The second debate happened and then he lost me. The second debate, remember the, the first debate, remember Trump was just yelling at him like, nah, 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 nah. and we were all like, Trump, stop yelling at him. And then the second debate happened and then Biden started talking and I was like, ah, start yelling at him again. Cause like I, he just kept saying crazy shit, crap. Remember, remember when Biden pointed Trump, it was like, America, that man Trump right there, let me tell you something. He's the most racist president in the history of presidents. Really? The most racist president out of all the presidents? I mean, are we speaking like pound for pound? Because what exactly is your measurement policy exactly? Like, how did, he, how did he beat the first 12 slave owners exactly? What did he do? Just explain it to me. Like, I, okay, Jefferson, I can see a little bit because he liked the pussy. But the other 11 crowd, how did he beat the other 11? I'm, I'm sorry, I can't talk to you, crowd, unless we all agree at most he's 13th most racist president. Until we agree, we can maybe go that far, maybe. And, but I don't know. I don't know, crowd. I don't know. I, I don't know if he breaks top 40, in my opinion. In my humble opinion, Trump. Crowd, to call Trump the most racist president in the history of presidents is so disrespectful to some of the most racist presidents in the history of mankind, crowd. Come on now. The dude who incurred, like the dude who started slavery should be on the list, crowd. The dude who did the Jim Crow laws should be on the list. Remember the mother, remember the president who put syphilis in niggas? He should be on the list. Um, do y'all not know about syphilis, nigga guy? Do y'all not know? I'll tell you the story. What happened was, the president was sitting there at his desk going, rats and rats, right? Uh, got, assistant walks in, Mr. President! He was like, what? I have a great idea. What is it? Let's put syphilis in every black man we see. And he was like, oh, that's a great idea. And he sat there and he typed it out. And crowd, that joke was only funny because he couldn't jump. He was in a wheelchair. So that crowd is, uh, that was a smart joke. I'm proud of y'all, I'm proud of y'all. I know some of y'all aren't with me on this whole Trump not being the most racist president yet, though. I get that. I get that. I see where y'all coming from. You're like, he ain't. He might be the most racist. He might be. I think the biggest problem, maybe, for Trump, honestly, the biggest problem, is that he didn't play the saxophone. See, crowd, if he played the saxophone, if he played the saxophone, you wouldn't even know. You'd be like, oh, I just love the nigga. Because I'm telling you, it worked the last time. Let me tell you, crowd, there's this man named Bill Clinton who was like the pie popper of the Negroes crowd. Let me tell you, he went on the blackest television he could show, Arsenio Hall, and got the blackest instrument he could find, the saxophone. And he was like, hey niggas, I'm just like you. Do 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 do. And we fell for it. And we were like, ah, vote, 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 vote. And he was like, thank you guys. Thank you so much. Now go to jail, all of you. Go to jail, go to jail. And who wrote that bill? Who wrote the crime bill? Who wrote the crime bill? Biden. So, by the numbers, Biden is much more racist. <laughs> I'm sorry, I can't finish that sentence. I got some student loans coming. So, like, I don't want, like, <laughs> I'm not trying to fuck up that shit, crowd. No, 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 no. 
I actually know what he's talking about. I'm sorry, I'm even bringing up politics. I apologize, Scott. I, my father's a political science professor, uh, I, so he wrote seven books on race, seven, seven books on the systematic destruction uh, that white people put on black people, seven books. So <laughs> I grew up very, 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 very unhappy. You understand? I, I, I know everything that y'all did, everything. And uh, no, but it's okay, it's okay. I sleep with a lot of white women, so it balances out. It does, it does. Every time I finish, I yell freedom. So it does, I just... Freedom! I said, oh, I helped. And I'm like, I'm like, yeah, you did, Stacey, yeah, you did. I like this room, it's very good, it's nice. It's energy, we're connected emotionally, we're getting deep layers, I like it, it's nice. Fuck yeah, man. One more white joke? So, crowd, here's my thing. Okay, Trump, he's not the most racist, he's not. He's not, but I'll say this, he tried. <laughs> he tried to be the most racist crowd. He put the damn one, two. He, tried, he put his fucking, he pursued his dream, okay? So, let that be a lesson to you kids. Just sometimes your dreams don't work out doesn't mean you shouldn't pursue them, okay? So, you could be Hitler next time, maybe. So, <laughs> And it was, he tried to be racist. I mean, he, he, he tried to run a coup. He really, I mean, he tried. I don't, it, it, what, it probably wasn't the best plan coup. It wasn't the best plan. And I bet you it wasn't the best plan because I don't think those people at the coup probably knew what a coup was. And I think that, I think that was the biggest hurdle. You know what I mean? You got to have coup knowledge crowd to do a coup in the first place. I don't think they knew what a coup was. They just showed up, put a flag down, and caught their flight. That's not coup activity. You don't do a coup and then go back to your nine to five. That is not coup life. You gotta commit to the coup. <laughs> I mean, but we saw, the, we saw the coup coming. I mean, I don't know if it was gonna be a coup, but we all saw something coming. We all knew something was happening. At least I knew something was gonna happen after 2020. That summer, whoo, I knew there was gonna be a backlash, you know? Cause that's how America works, right? We all know America works. It's like progress, backlash, right? Like remember we had we, uh, 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 free slaves, then we had segregation, right? We had Obama, then we had Trump, right? Right? We had hip hop, then we had white rappers. Crowd, there's a pattern here. <laughs> I don't mind white rappers anymore. Nah, man. I, I actually like Post Malone now. Post Malone, I ain't like him at first. I ain't, but then I heard that Spider-Man song and I changed my mind, I did. I did. I, was, I woke up one morning, I was like, you know what, I, I think we all might be sunflowers if you think about it. I did, I just, I had that thought. But during the, I don't know, Black Lives Matter March, man, I just got nervous because it looked beautiful at first. And it was just too beautiful. Everybody was loving each other too much. You know, black and white people were marching. I was like, that's great, that's great. But then it started getting more tense, you know. White people started getting in cops' face like, fuck you. And I was like, okay, okay guys, stop. Then a white woman got in a cop car. I don't know if y'all saw her, got in a cop car, pulled her, put her pants down, just took a shit on the cop car. Y'all saw that? She was like, freedom! Ah! I was like, we didn't, write, we didn't have a meeting on that, nigga. Why are you doing that? We ain't, there was no marching about shitting on cars. We ain't asked for that. I mean, it's just too much. It was crazy. Congress came out. Congress was like, hey, we're going to come out here and we're going to talk about race. And we're like, thank you, Congress, for coming out and talking about race. And what happened? They came out one day wearing just kente cloth. You know what I mean? Like, like it was an African ceremony, and they were just like, Wakanda for life. What the fuck are y'all doing? <laughs> we ain't asked for that. And then NASCAR, y'all saw with NASCAR? Remember that NASCAR? One day they just woke up and they were like, oh, what are Confederate flags doing here? Oh my God. Oh my God. Who put these here? I had no idea they were here. Had I known these were here, this would have never happened, because Everybody knows NASCAR is about diversity. Everybody knows it. <laughs> so I'm getting nervous. This is a lot of things happening. It's a lot of progress. There's gonna be a backlash. And so I'm getting nervous, crowd. I'm like, what's gonna be this backlash? What's gonna be this, this like spark that's gonna make this gasoline blow up? What's it gonna be? What's it gonna be? And then it happened, crowd. I think we all know what happened. We all know when it, know when it happened. Yeah, that's right. It was August of 2020 when The Bachelor announced its new season. I don't know where you were at, crowd. <laughs> I don't know where you were at when The Bachelor decided to have a black man for the first time crowd. A Negro for the very first time in the show's history. A show that's been on for 400 seasons crowd, let me tell you. 
They finally just went with a black man and they jumped right into black. Like there was no middle ground. Like they didn't throw a Mexican in there to, you know, you know, you know what I'm saying, to ease into it. No, they just went straight black. Cause they've only had like three white guys, three types of white guys. They had like, you know, a country white guy, you know, in the woods, like. <laughs> I need love, you know. Or you have a city white guy going like, oh, taxi, yeah. Right? Or even a white guy who may or may not be gay. You know, that guy. <laughs> but they didn't do any of that. They went straight to black, straight to black. And I'm sitting there like, oh my God. Is America ready for this? And everybody was like, of course we're ready for this. I was like, are you sure? America's ready to see one black man fuck a house full of 50 white women? Are you sure? On ABC, are you sure? On Disney Plus, are you sure? And they were like, of course we're sure. And I'm like, okay. And guess what, crowd? Tuesday the show premiered. Wednesday the Capitol burned. So they weren't ready, is what I'm trying to say. Him either. He didn't even touch him. He was just like, hello. And they were like, burn it all down! Burn it down before the rose ceremony! <laughs> this is nice. I enjoy this energy, sir. I enjoy your hair. I like your tan. How rich are you, you think? <laughs> She's nodding. I like that energy. Fuck yeah, that's that rich energy. Uh, I don't know. What's, what's money? It's all energy. <laughs> that's how rich I am. I get into the godlike status. Fuck yeah. I'm gonna be your friend hanging on your yacht. Bury a dead body. That's what rich people do, I don't know, I just see the TV. Ooh, I used to have a rich friend once, so there. I did, when he was six years old, his name was Max, and he was the dopest human being I've ever met in my life. But it was weird, cause you know, like poor people. Y'all remember the day you realized you were poor, but you, ain't, you know, start off life thinking things are good, things are good, and then you meet that one person, like, oh shit. Like, I, this dumpster tree house ain't shit. You know, like, I met Max, he had a fucking nice life, dude. Like, he had a nice gated community. I've never seen a gated community before. I've seen gated windows, but a whole community, nigga, like. I'm in there like, man, white people have the nicest prisons. And then, like. <laughs> I was jealous of him like a motherfucker. He had nice parents who said, nice, 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 nice parents who said please and thank you. You know what I mean? And live together. Nice motherfuckers, man. For real, the first night I stayed there, I was like, when your dad gonna go home? Because, like, I just never. I didn't understand this dynamic of this love that was happening in this house. They were just communicating with each other. Amazing. Do you have kids, sir? Right there? That's dope. That's fucking, that gave me son, that's awesome. Let me ask you this, because I know you live in the North and I don't know your policy on family. I want to know what a rich man, how a rich man lives. That's my whole policy. Uh, uh, when he was like, you know, young, five, six, did you beat him? <laughs> Damn, nice, fuck yeah, man. You do your own work, sir, I appreciate that. I respect the fuck out of that. Most people will get the help to do it so they can have some deniability, but not you, nigga. I'm gonna beat it myself, fuck that. I'm gonna show him. You better get these stocks right, nigga, bam! That's, I respect you, sir, fuck yeah, nigga. You gotta know. <laughs> That's nice, it's nice to talk about this up here, in, you know, up north, it's very awkward. You know, talking about beating kids. Ugh, the South, they love that shit. I don't know if y'all know that. Have you been down there? They'd be like, I'll do that shit right now. Bah, 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 bah. You know, they really. I was in, t <laughs> I'm telling you, man, one time I was in North Carolina, I was like, anybody ever beat their kid in public? This one was like, hell yeah. I was like, I mean, where? Walmart, Kmart, Target. I'm like, nigga, you can go to jail. Right? But you come up north to New York and they're very indignant up here, up, up north, right? We don't beat our kid up here, asshole. All right? We give him Adderall. And you go, I don't know. I don't know if that's better. <laughs> I don't know, I don't know, crowd. <laughs> it's also a generational thing too, right? Generational, right? Because I was born in the 80s and they had a very specific way of doing things, right? 90s babies, arts babies, I don't know what the fuck y'all were doing, I don't know, right? 80s babies, my dad still talks about beating me, but like, <laughs> like whimsically, you know what I mean? Like, like almost remembering a fine scotch, you know, just. Like, mm, I used to beat you. I'm like, I'm like, why are you singing? It's Christmas. What are we doing here? Like, why? 
right? But then my sister got born in 1995, and suddenly he was like, you know what? Beating is wrong. We're not going to beat. I was like, fuck you, nigga. Follow through. Come on now. You beat the first one, you beat the second one. That's called family. Right? Okay, round of applause. Who got beat growing up? Round of applause growing up. Damn, that is a lot of my people right there. That is a lot of white people. Wow. No offense, I kind of like when I see white people get beat. No offense, no offense. It makes me feel a lot closer to you. That's all I'm trying to say. Wow, that's real. Okay, round of applause. Who got beat with a belt or worse? Is that more people? God damn, y'all. I mean, a real ass woman. Oh, thought you were fucking around. Nice. I respect y'all, New York. Y'all are some real people. Hell yeah. Just, just out of respect, out of respect. Uh, yell something out worse than a belt. What's worse than a belt? Fire hydrant? No, no, I heard that wrong. I heard that wrong. I did not hear fire hydrant. Your mama is not the Hulk. I know that's not happening right now. What the fuck you doing? Ah, oh, that did not happen. Let me calm down. Speak clearly. What did you just say? Wire hanger. That's a lot more pleasant in retrospect. You know what I mean? If I heard that first, like, oh, but now that fire hydrant, well, fuck, you got off lucky. She had a fire hydrant. And she picked up the wire hanger. Oh, fuck yeah. I'm respect that. Anybody else? A ping pong paddle, nigga! That is adorable as fuck, hell yeah! You're sitting here training for the Olympics and you're fucking up! There are Asian kids out there getting their assholes much worse than you! You better be lucky, nigga. A bamboo? Were you training for a kung fu tournament, nigga? What happened? This is amazing. This is the most eclectic rich people fucking assortment. A lot got your ass whooping in the rec room. No offense, I'm not judging you. That's probably a very nice rec room, sweet people. I want to visit this rec room. I need to figure out what equity is. <laughs> Give me one more thing. A what? A kitchen chair? A kitchen chair. That is so specific. A kitchen chair, not like a dining room chair. Not a living room chair. Kitchen, nigga, what? Were you fucking up in the kitchen or did she go to the kitchen to get the chair? Because that's even more fucked up. That's scary. It's a, it was a what? Very specific chair. Okay, so that's the ass whooping chair of the household? Is that what's going on? Because that's thug as a motherfucker. That is so scary, white people. That's a new level. I'm sorry. This is just really fun. I apologize. Crowd, I don't know why I like asking people what's the worst thing I beat with. You know what it is? You really never know. You got abused until you, you have to yell it out in public. That's what it is. It's like, I think your chair chick thought everything was cool. That's crazy, crowd. Crowd, y'all been very nice. I'm gonna tell you the, okay, since y'all been nice and, and told me what you would beat with, I, I feel compelled. I feel like I gotta tell you the worst thing I got beat with and then we can move on. But listen, crowd, you're, you're, you're New York. You're hard as fuck. So everything I say is clearly not gonna even phase you because you've seen everything, am I right? Right, right, good. So obviously, obviously. So what I got beat with sounds a lot worse. It sounds a lot worse than it was. So don't overreact, okay? Cool, cool. Worst thing I got beat with, shotgun. So. When I was five years old, <laughs> I was five years old, right? But dad was like, boy, let's go back to uh, Alabama where I was born, see the farm. I was like, yeah, daddy. So I'm like, yeah, so I'm running around the, I'm running around the farm, I'm running around playing with chickens, I'm playing with dogs, and crowd, I see the coolest toy lying on the ground. And a lot of adults would call that toy a shotgun, right? And a lot of adults would also say it wasn't lying on the ground since it was locked in a cabinet. But I found it anyway, crowd. My first thought to myself was like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell daddy about this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask him about it. I'm gonna see what he thinks about this gun. I'm gonna, I'm gonna play. So I run to my dad, crowd. I run, I run as fast as I can. I'm like, dad, look what I found. And my dad immediately jumped to the ground because that's what you should do, crowd. When a five-year-old is running at you with a shotgun, you understand me? If they the, their arms don't work right, crowd, get on the ground. Anything can happen. So dad grabbed the gun from me and everybody's like, my whole family's like, beat the, beat the fuck, beat this kid, beat the fuck, beat this kid, beat the fuck out of this kid. My dad had a better idea. He was like, boy, come here, right? So he loaded the shotgun up, pointed it out to the field, took the butt of the shotgun, put it to my chest, and was like, boy, are you ready? And I'm like, ha, 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 ready for what? And he pulled the trigger. Now, crowd. I don't know if you know what it feels like to have a butt of a shotgun hit your five-year-old chest, but let me tell you, it feels very similar to abuse. 
And that is what I was trying to tell my daddy. <laughs> Crowd, y'all ready for a great night of comedy? Y'all are awesome. This is such a dope night. Y'all are so dope. This is such a wonderful night.